Hello, for today's project you will need again some cotton yarn that's pretty lightweight and you're going to make a slip knot. I am a size M38 European and I will chain 70 plus 3. So whichever size you need you will have to do multiples of 14 plus 3 chains at the end. So once you have those 70 chains, you're going to yarn over and you're going to find the fourth chain space from the hook and then you're going to insert your hook there. I am using the back loops because I want my uh, project to have nice finished edge. I will show you later what I mean and you're just going to work double crochets in each of the stitches. That means for the next four chain spaces, we're going to have one double crochet in each of those spaces. I've um, slowed down the footage so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm uh, going in the back loops and this is going to create a very nice edge of the work it's not going to be just a single line you will see at one point i will show you how it looks like if you do it differently so right now if you count we have in total of six of these because we count the first one and now we're going to yarn over we're going to do a decrease we're going to catch that little chain we're going to yarn over pull through two then we're going to yarn over we're going to catch the next stitch yarn over pull through two and yarn over and pull through three loops we're going to do that one more time yarn over catch that stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over catch the stitch insert your hook yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through three so now we have done a decrease now we're going to have again four double crochets in the next four chain spaces make sure you're counting your stitches because this is crucial to the whole project once we have those four uh, double crochets in the next four chains we're going to do an increase and the increase we are going to insert two double crochets uh, in each of the following two stitches so as you can see again i'm going into the back loop and this is one double crochet and then we're going to insert another double crochet into the same chain space And we're going to repeat that for the following chain space we're going to insert two double crochets and after we've done that we are going to have one double crochet in each of the next four chain spaces and now after we do this we are going to have a decrease and we're just going to be repeating this pattern so we're going to have four double crochets and then we are going to have a decrease in the next four chain spaces then we are going to do an increase in the following two and then again four and then the decrease this is the pattern so right now i'm doing the the decrease again you start to do the double crochet but you don't finish it and you put two double crochets together and then you repeat that in the in following two chain spaces Will 
as you can see our pattern has already forming and we are left with five chains uh, so now what we're going to do in the next four chain spaces we are going to have one double crochet in each of those spaces and in the last one the fifth one we're going to insert two double crochets then we're going to chain three and we're going to turn our work so this is just a sample because i did not record when i started making this so this is just a sample of 31 chains that's why it's small 70 uh, 70 plus 3 looks a lot longer and this is just uh, to demonstrate how i did it and this is the same pattern that you will be doing uh, no matter how big your work is and this pattern is perfect for anything if you want a blanket if you want uh, a scarf it looks beautiful here I'm chaining three because I want to show you how to do the next row so you're going to start crocheting from that first chain from the hook we're going to make another double crochet right there and after that we're going to have one double crochet in each of the following four stitches Again, I slowed down the speed of this so you can actually see exactly what I'm doing and so you can follow along if you desire. And once we have those four uh, double crochets, we are going to do our decrease. So we're just repeating the pattern. Make sure you count all the stitches that you have so that you don't have an extra. It can always slip through. And now we're doing a decrease. So we're going to pull the hook through, yarn over, and then pull through, yarn over, and pull through two, yarn over, and pull through three. And we're going to repeat that. So we have two double crochets stitched together. I feel like I've run a marathon <laughs> anyways so now the decrease is done and now we're going to have one double crochet in each of the following four chain spaces now I am uh, showing you what it's going to look like where your first uh, increase stitch is going to be so the first one is going to come in between those f those first two that you did in the previous row so as you can see it's like in between those four double crochets those two that we inserted in one chain space and those two that we inserted in the other one and the next increase is going to come right on top of the second two of the second double crochets of the second increase of the previous row i really hope that makes sense that i'm being clear and this is always going to be the case so you need to make sure that your increase stitch starts Right at the right spot because that means that you have done everything correctly now we're just going to have uh, one double crochet in each of the following chain uh, four chains and then we're going to do a decrease stitch And 
and now we're going to do a decrease so yarn over pull through the loop yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and so on so you're going to do that for the next four chains And after we finish, we're just going to have one double crochet in each of the remaining stitches, which is five. And in the fifth one, we are going to insert two double crochets. We're going to chain three and we're going to turn our work. here you can see that that fifth chain space I am inserting two double crochets and that's the end of the row too. This is the pattern that we're going to be repeating over and over again and as you can see it's already starting to form at this point it's not curled up too much but it's already wavy and it's already <laughs> looking pretty and uh, at any point you can change the color of the yarn which I actually did because it makes this pattern so much more interesting. So right here I'm explaining that you need to start from the hook in that first chain space. You're going to have one double crochet and then you're going to crochet four double crochets and then a decrease stitch and so on. And now here I'm showing you how I add the color and you want to pull the color through uh, so that it, the whole wall of that side is going to be in that color so you start with it and uh, it needs uh, you need to to have that uh, chain of three with the new color i really hope i'm making some sense but anyways if you follow what i'm doing you cannot make a mistake trust me on that as you can see now i'm going to have that chain of three and I'm going to turn the work and we're going to insert that first double crochet into that first chain space and now I'm just repeating the same pattern but I just wanted to show you that you're just going to continue doing exactly the same thing over and over again with each color and you cannot make a mistake this is a foolproof pattern and it works every time and so right here I'm showing you again now I'm adding another color and I want to show it again how I connect them there are various ways to connect the yarns but I find this one to be the easiest because uh, you don't have to uh, be very careful about how you do it because uh, if you do it in a different way that's like more professional, it's not going to uh, always be at the spot where you want the new color to start. So this is the easiest way. And then eventually you can cut off this extra yarn. You don't really need it or you can hide it. And then I'm going to make a chain of three. And here I am showing you again that you have to don't forget to start from that first chain from the hook and this was altogether my last row that's why I wanted to show you you're practically going to finish in the same way if you desire so you can go over that last row uh, with single crochets to finish it off I did not feel like I wanted to add extra bulk to this and it looks pretty nice and it's not curling up it's not moving so I don't see the point in either wasting the yarn or making it more bulky because when you add that uh, final 
uh, row of single crochets, it can create a little bit of a bulk. Or if you desire, you can go with a row of slip stitches, but that will make the top not stretchy. So maybe you want to avoid that. I like the crochet stuff because they are very comfy and uh, they offer you that stretchiness that some garments just don't. And that's why I'm always trying to make them uh, nice and loose fitting, but still a little bit loose so that they're hugging my body. And as you can see, I'm constantly counting. Um, my memory sometimes is not the best, but uh, aside from the memory, it's like I prefer to just count the stitches and do something else like listen to uh, a podcast or listen to uh, an audiobook. So um, this way I'm avoiding uh, wasted time. Not that I'm wasting it, I'm doing something, I'm creating something, but at the same time, I like to do to have some kind of brain activity aside from this one. So yeah, I always count and double check if I have enough stitches and if I'm on the right track because sometimes even one stitch, one extra double crochet can sneak through and then the whole thing just falls through. You have to undo it and do it again. And so I finish this way and now uh, this is how I put the sides together. This is the inside. Eventually I did cut off this extra yarn uh, everywhere where I had it because I made those little knots and I'm going to show you how I stitched it together. So you can do it two, two ways. You can use darning needle or the needle that's uh, meant for the yarn or you can use your hook. I decided to use a hook. Uh, it's a little bit easier and you're just going to insert the color of your choice and you're just going to start uh, making slip stitches and you're going to try to catch each and every row that you did. Um, in some of the rows maybe you would need uh, two of the stitches but mostly one slip stitch is enough. And you're just going to continue doing that all the way down or until you want that to be because you will see that I left some I left sides open a little bit because I wanted them to have a little slit. I think that, that those two little slits added to uh, the appearance of this top. I think it looks much cuter and it looks much nicer this way. So um, I did it without measuring. I did it without like trying it on. This was kind of like, okay, this here, I wanted to stop. And now uh, you will see what I mean when I say that I added slits. So there is, there are spaces on the side and we need to finish the row, those row edges. So I'm going to do that by uh, doing a single crochet all around that those two triangles on each side. Again in the same way you're going to insert your your hook and you're going to introduce new yarn and try to hide that tongue of the yarn that's left. That extra yarn you can try to hide it in uh, in your stitches. As you can see that's what I'm doing here and in this way you're avoiding uh, it getting undone and you're avoiding also having to cut it. So once I did that I needed to make straps. So I did not want the straps to be equal 
this is me trying to show you what it looks like on the side and I failed anyways this is uh, one part of the strap and I uh, made a chain of 61 well 62 in total and then I used half double crochets and again I went into those back loops and I will show you why So right here you can see that I'm doing half double crochets and I'm going into the back loops and when you do this your edge is going to be the same on top and on the bottom. If you go from the front and catch the front loops your uh, bottom is going to look like a single line so this is what it looks like it looks identical on both sides and this is what it would look like if you went through just that first um, the front loop so if you do the front loop your work is going to be like a line I hope you can see it because this does not look nice and it's very rigid it doesn't it's not elastic at all so I prefer to do it this way and when you use back loops you're going to avoid this okay so here I thought that I was recording but I wasn't and this is what those straps look like I made them in two colors each and I made each one 62 long, 62 stitches long, and then I'm going to tie them. I prefer them to have a little bit of body as opposed to being just a single chain. And now it's time to add some uh, real chain uh, to the side. I wanted to add a little something extra and it ended up looking very cute just that here I added the chain that was a little bit too long so I had to undo it and uh, reattach it but it turned out perfectly I did not really measure anything just that this looked very long and um, it's very easy to do you just need a set of pliers and that's all and these ones are for the jewelry so you can get it at uh, Michael's and those kinds of places for like Hobby Lobby and um, they're very cheap once I did this it was time to deal with the the other strap so I made another strap but I wanted this one to be single and I did it in the same way also 60 chain 62 and repeated everything that I did and now I wanted to add some crystals as you know I'm obsessed with them and right here I added some black ones uh, some uh, skin color ones even though they're sparkly and some that are a little bit pink and it looks very cute I really love it um, I think that this gave a, something extra to the whole top um, this might look a little bit tedious but it's very quick it's less than five minutes and uh, you add something very extra to your top and make it look different so use those five minutes wisely <laughs> it it is worth it and these crystals are actually just glass beads that you can get at michael's uh, for like very cheap and uh, they have this beautiful sparkle that for whatever reason uh, indoors you cannot really catch on camera but outside it's magic pure magic so I'm going to speed this up and um, this is it um, I hope you liked it please comment like subscribe and share 
subscribing and liking it and commenting means so much for my channel it is for free so just hit that uh, button and make sure to uh, ring the bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future uploads and here is the final product i hope you liked it and see you soon bye